Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video on Snapchat earnings. So I'm going to show you where I'm going to get all this information. So right now I'm at their investor relations page. I'm going to go to financials here. I'm going to go to quarterly results. Right here for uh, 2022. One, we have the earnings slides. And the SEC filings, we have to go to uh, this page right here. And then here we could grab the 8K, the 10Q, whatever you want to grab. I grabbed the 8K. So we're going to go look at that PowerPoint presentation that they have of the earnings. So here they have everything uh, really nicely organized for us. And it's um, pretty user-friendly here. So the... Let's just go over the highlights. So for revenue, we saw revenue increase 38% year over year. And if you want to um, understand how to make this calculation, I talk about it in my uh, Netflix video, which I'll link down below. And um, we can see right here, average revenue per user increased 17% year over year to $3.20 in Q1 2022. So uh, these numbers right here look pretty darn good. Operating margins improved, but as you can see here, um, we're still negative. The um, parentheses right here is always talking about uh, negative. That's just uh, how things work in the accounting world. Let's see, um, adjusted gross margins, they improved as well. And you can see uh, here, net loss of 360 million. So um, Snapchat, if you didn't know, uh, they don't really make money, they kind of lose money. And um, it's a consistent trend. And uh, when we actually look at the earnings before income tax and depreciation, then you see something of a different story, you know? Here we see that uh, they actually made 64 million. So this is, keep in mind, this is earnings before income tax and depreciation, amortization. And then cash flow. We can see that operating cash flow was 127 million compared to 137 million in uh, Q1 2021. But what we want to pay attention to is this free cash flow. So here we see 106 million compared to 126 million in Q1 of 2021. So if we go and look at their cash flow statement, here I'm on Yahoo Finance, by the way. So we can see that free cash flow has uh, recently gone positive. So in 2020, 2019, 2018, these were negative numbers. We're seeing uh, Snap uh, starting to go cash flow positive. So this is a pretty uh, decent sign to pay attention to. Um, we're going to look at the um, daily active users. So it says daily active users were 332 million in Q1 2022 and an increase of 52 million, or 18% year over year. So, I mean, this is pretty good growth in daily active users. It's um, pretty consistent. And they're going to show us a chart uh, later on um, in this slide deck. So here they give us a little bit more business highlights. They say, we invested and innovated in our augmented reality platform. And if you want, you could pause the video. You could um, take a detailed look at these line items. But I'm just going to kind of skip through them because I'm not as familiar with um, Snapchat business model. I'm just looking at the numbers here. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to continue. Um, so here they say uh, revenue from dynamic ads were more than triple year over year. So that's pretty good. And they have a revenue by geography lined out for us. So here we can see that 38% um, year-over-year year growth if we're comparing from uh, Q1 2021 to Q1 2022. And you can see that um, Q4 is looking like their uh, pretty strong season. So if we're comparing to uh, last quarter, then yeah, I mean, we're not doing as well, but these are all seasonality changes. So um, Q4, you know, that's including December and, you know, we got all these holidays. So, you know, it would make sense that Q4 is a better quarter for them. 
So we see that um, most of the revenue is coming from North America. And uh, this is their revenue breakdown in Europe and the rest of the world. So if we're looking at their um, average daily active users, DAU for short, we can see that um, this is consistently climbing. Now here we see this trend where it's going up by um, about 13 million. So here in Q1 2021, we see 280 and then another 13 million, 293, another 13 million, 306, another 13, 319, and another 13, 332. So can I make this estimate that the next quarter we're going to see 345 million active users? Maybe or maybe not. Uh, we'll see. But just given this trend, I mean, that's what I would forecast. Here we see uh, this breakdown. So North America, Europe, rest of the world. So average revenue per user. We can see that um, this has a lot of fluctual um, seasonality changes. So yeah, I mean, did more in um, the Q4. Uh, Q Q1 came in a little bit weaker, but you know we're comparing quarter to quarter. So if we're comparing quarter to quarter of the last year and this year, then yeah, we did uh, significantly better, 17%. And then adjusted cost of revenue. So now we're seeing, um, if we're comparing quarter to quarter, we're seeing our costs go down pretty significantly. I mean, here, that was 53%. Now, um, here we're at 39%, but we still came in a little bit higher than um, Q4 2021. So something to pay attention to. And then they show how this cost is broken down, as you can see. Most of it is coming from uh, infrastructure. Now, when we're looking at operating expenses, these are going up. So in my opinion, this, this makes a lot of sense because see, it's um, R&D, sales and marketing, um, general and administrative. So, you know, if we're seeing inflation, then yeah, I would assume that these prices are going up. You can see that a lot of this is coming from R&D. As you can see, the yellow bar. And then now they give us a uh, graphic of net income and adjusted earnings EBITDA. So here we can see, um, yeah, we're losing quite a bit of money. So 360 million. So um, we're losing more than um, the prior year's quarter. And that's probably because of the cost, as you saw before. And adjusted uh, EBITDA. So we actually did uh, pretty darn good the last quarter. See, we made uh, 327 million. And uh, this actually went down significantly, 64 million here. And now we see uh, diluted net income per share. So as we can see, this number is not looking too good. It was um, one cent, one cent per share diluted um, in the last quarter, but now it's negative uh, twenty-two. And I mean, that's because we uh, obviously lost money, as you saw. It was like negative three hundred something million. And here we see common shares outstanding plus underlying stock-based rewards. And um, this number is going up, so you want to pay attention to this because um, as this number goes up, uh, shareholders will get diluted because um, they're issuing more common stock. Now we see uh, free cash flow. And as you can see from what I um, talked about in Yahoo Finance, you know, we were negative and now we're going positive again. So um, this free cash flow trend is looking pretty good. Now, they give us a Q2 2022 outlook. So this is important. This is what we want to focus on. They say revenue growth year over year is estimated to be between 20 and 25%. So if you thought that they were going to do better than this quarter, the next quarter, then um, yeah, you're 
right, but you're wrong. Because uh, you're right that they're doing better uh, year over year, but they're not going to beat this current quarter's um, growth. Because as you saw before, I mean, that was like over 30% in revenue growth this quarter. But the next quarter, they're estimating between 20 and 25%. So it's going to be less than um, this current quarter's year-over-year -year growth. And they're also saying adjusted EBITDA is, is estimated to be between break-even and 50 million. So this is also going to be lower uh, next quarter as well. Because um, if we're looking at this quarter, this quarter was around 60 million. So now they're saying they're either going to break even or 50 million is going to be the top line. So um, this number is going to come in weaker. So uh, Q2 2022 outlook, um, I wouldn't say it's looking too good. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're thinking about buying Snap, um, just that their next quarter is going to underperform, underperform if we're comparing it to this quarter. And, you know, of course, that could be due to seasonal changes or whatever, but and um, increasing prices. So uh, just keep that in mind that if you are looking for a buying opportunity, it could come uh, next quarter when um, these numbers come in line and it's showing some weakness. And maybe we don't make that 13 million um, daily active user growth and we um, do something under that. Then you could see something probably catastrophic like uh, with Netflix or Facebook or whatever. So uh, keep that in mind. And now we're going to jump to the um, 8K and we're going to cover the financials here real quick. So um, I know this um, I know this kind of zoomed out. So let me zoom in for you guys. So we're going to look at their balance sheet and I'm just going to do a very quick overview. So I highlighted uh, cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities, accounts receivable, net of allowance. So um, these are the most liquid assets. And this sums up to something close to around um, six, what is that? Six billion. And if we're looking at their total current liabilities, well, they're only paying 842 million. And I know I say only, I mean, I would kill to have just one of these. So when we're comparing these two, um, they're actually, you know, they're not going to go out of business anytime soon. They could pay their uh, current liabilities about seven, seven times over. So uh, they're in pretty decent financial standing, in my opinion, if we're looking at the balance sheet. And if we're going to scroll down. So here we see... Um, Adjusted EBITDA reconcil reconciliations. We see um, the stock-based compensation expense. So um, this is going up, as you can see. And this is how they're coming up with this adjusted um, EBITDA reconciliation. So um, they start with a net loss. So this is their net loss that they reported. And they make all these little adjustments, you know, like um, things like interest income, interest expense. Um, other expenses, income tax expense, and then depreciation and amortization. And then stock-based compensation, you know, it's not a cash expense because um, they're rewarding their um, employees with uh, stock-based options. So they, when they add this back in, that's when you see this number go positive. So just keep that in mind when you see, oh, this company is losing tons of money. I mean, not really because um, stock-based compensation and depreciation and amortization, which are non-cash expenses. So um, that's basically all I wanted to go over, and I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little presentation on SNAP. Have a good one.